Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Vivian Rosenthal, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Gold Run Augmented Reality Platform. And um, I was an architect who was seduced uh, by the, the promise of a, of a digital future and the promise of a digital reality. And I call this uh, digital seduction. I think it's something that we all suffer from, both good and bad, um, whether it's iPads, iPods, iPhones, Xbox, um, Facebook, Google, the list goes on and on. And clearly, um, it's sort of become a part of the way we think and the way we interact. And what used to be sort of a small group of individuals who called themselves sort of science fiction nerds who uh, followed the worlds of Neuromancer and Blade Runner and Minority Report have all of a sudden become a society of believers. And in fact, they're not just believers, they're really users. Um, they use the technology. I'd say they've become the technology. And um, I'd go so far as to say that we've actually become the technology. Um, it's really, it's embedded in the way we think, it's embedded in the way we learn, embedded in the way we act, and the way we interact with each other. Um, we've really become cyborgs in that the technology has become an extension of ourselves and an extension of the self. Um, so what, is, what does all this mean? Well, it means that science fiction really is no longer science fiction. It actually just becomes science. Um, and, you know, futurists believe that in the near term we're going to reach what's called technological singularity, which is a point in time when basically technological advances happen almost instantaneously, which um, is both really exciting and, and kind of terrifying at the same time. So what was once imaginary is suddenly real, and fiction becomes nonfiction, and our dreams become reality. And so I think what this means is that once technology is ubiquitous, then it's really the creative uses of it that become the most critical in shaping our future reality. Um, my personal obsession has been looking at where our digital and physical lives meet, um, specifically through the lens of augmented reality, or what's referred to as AR. Um, AR is basically allows you to place digital objects on top of the real world um, that you can't see with your naked eye, but you can see through um, through sort of a camera, whether it's on your smartphone or your computer. And a common use of AR, that one that everyone is familiar with, is, is the uh, yellow line in football, right? So that line doesn't really exist. It's not painted on the field, but um, you can see it, and it has geographic specificity. And so this clip I'm going to show is from Iron Man 2, and I just wanted to make sure that everyone sort of understand, like um, understood, Nine. sorry, that... Unlike the sort of potential of AR. So here. what we're seeing here is the Robert Downey Jr. is interacting with basically a, a virtual layer, this augmented reality layer. And he's doing so using gesture-based interactions, which are now completely Your ubiquitous. So our kids are using I'm the Wii uh, and Microsoft Redis Connect. Government to use their gestures to control virtual worlds. Trees. And um, what you'll see in this clip is that all of a sudden we have three technologies coming together. We have to make protons and neutrons. We have to make the assumption that he's actually wearing contact lenses of some kind that let him see this virtual world. And so in labs across the country, that noise go away. In labs across the country, um, they're basically prototyping AR glasses, AR contact lenses, AR overlays on, um, on glasses. So that this is not a distant future, this is that all current years. technology coming together. Still taking me to school. And it's what lets him solve the puzzle in, uh, in Iron Man, if, you, if you've seen it. So very powerful technology. So we've arrived. Clearly, um, but, but where have we arrived? Um, I think, you know, let's take a step backwards and sort of think about, sort of trace this uh, ubiquitous digital interactions. And it clearly started with the World Wide Web, 
The web brought us all online. It connected us to each other. It connected us to information and ultimately to new forms of exchange and commerce. Um, and, and just the way uh, the web brought us online, augmented reality has the power to bring us offline. Right? So AR is an incredibly disruptive technology that's going to really change the way we interact with each other and commerce and information over the next few years. Um, and we, we heard earlier from, from Chris that for the first time ever, smartphone sales surpassed PC sales. In the last quarter, 100 million smartphones were shipped, 92 million PCs, which is pretty staggering when you think about it. Um, so our future is this hybrid reality. I don't think anyone could um, say that it's not. But, um, and, and this is one, again, that bridges our, our physical and digital lives. Um, and let's talk about how that's possible. Well, it's possible through this um, idea of making it contextual. So when you think about virtual reality, virtual reality failed because it was all about simulation. Augmented reality is about context. It's about seeing the real world in front of you and having a digital overlay. Things being contextual um, are probably the most pertinent to our understanding of the world around us and to space and perception. So it's this context that's incredibly powerful. Um, so all of a sudden we can see and interact uh, with products virtually and we can also interact with characters from film and TV and, and games. So instead of them being on the screen, literally in the theater on the flat screen, it's 2D or you know, on your TV or on your PC, they're literally coming to life and jumping out from the screen and suddenly they're in, their, in your living room or they're floating in the park nearby um, or they're at Giant Stadium. So all of these objects suddenly have take on a new life. Um, and that sort of the really potent triumvirate that makes this possible is this combination of augmented reality, GPS, which is literally just longitude and latitude, and then virtual goods. And a virtual good can be really anything that exists in the real world, in the physical world, can have a virtual counterpoint. So you have a physical car, you can have a virtual car. Um, and so next clip, I'm just gonna show a project we did with YNR and Airwalk that sort of brings these all together. And it, and it does so by introducing what we're calling it Gold Run Virtual Commerce or V-Commerce. So online, you have e-commerce, which you know, sort of every brand at this point needs uh, an e-commerce platform. But offline, uh, we have what we're calling V-Commerce. And so these are literally just hot zones that we can create. Could be as big as a, you know, as a mall or an airport or a sporting stadium. Um, or it could be in everyone's living room or it could be every Target or Walmart across America. So this is the, uh, <clears throat> the video, let this play. This is an Airwalk store, and so is this. They are the world's first invisible pop-up stores. Stores that can be set up anywhere at any time. Simply by using smartphones, geolocation, and augmented reality. We created them for the limited edition relaunch of the Airwalk Gym a sneaker originally made for kids who hang out in skate parks or on the beach instead of going to gym class. So that's where we set up the stores. On November 6, 2010, they went live for one day. To get the gym, people had to be in the right location. So they downloaded the app, found the store, found the shoe, and bought it. got a lot of buzz. And Airwalk's e-store had their busiest weekend ever. Tell me what augmented reality shopping is and why that's going to be a big deal this year. Augmented reality is pretty rad. It's when you overlay the digital world onto the real world, usually by holding up your phone or your tablet to the air. So for example, in New York City, we've got an invisible store where if you're in the right location and you put your phone up, you can see a whole Airwalk store an exclusive product sold to an exclusive audience for an entirely new retail experience. 
or a cool style, and, and I'm glad they're back, and uh, I'm going to get a pair today. The Invisible Pop-Up Store. Watch out for the next one invisibly appearing near you. So, the U.S. virtual goods market is uh, going to hit 2.1 billion by the end of 2011. That's a very substantial number. And obviously, everyone's very excited about the, <laughs> the virtual goods market um, and seduced by the worlds of, of Zynga and Farmville. And while those are obviously incredibly powerful, um, I think people have forgotten about the real world. They've forgotten about the physical world. And um, so what I'm doing uh, with Gold Run and augmented reality is creating a virtual goods economy that's, that's actually mapped onto the real world. Um, so in some ways, you can see this as a, a sort of parallel universe to the one exists online. Um, and so literally doing this positions me I can become a, the largest uh, real estate owner of virtual space. Um, so here's some examples just to make sure everyone understands what this looks like. So a brand who doesn't say have a brick and mortar store at a particular location can suddenly put their product for sale in an airport or in a mall or in a park um, and create these virtual points of sale. Um, or, very different example, we're going to be working with animal shelters across the country. So all of a sudden, we can create hot zones around these animal shelters. So it might be that I walk home from work and I don't even realize there's an animal shelter a few blocks away. But suddenly, if we create a mile radius around that animal shelter, you can see this dog that's telling you or a cat that it needs a home. And suddenly, you might end up adopting a pet on your way home. Um, or uh, we're doing the, the world's first uh, AR vinyl toy scavenger hunt. So literally, we're working with um, 50 of the best toy designers around the world. There's over 250 toys. And there's virtual versions of them that are throughout the world, um, both in, in Europe and, and in the US. And the people who collect the most virtual uh, versions of the toy win the real one. Um, and, and another example is um, we're creating a campaign. It's called uh, Visualize the Vote, Voterize.com. And literally, it's the idea of using technology to allow people who, aren't, who are under 18 to have a voice, to be able to vote, so to speak. So they can take photos using augmented reality with a candidate of their choice. And those photos all become geotagged and part of a, a website and, and map. So what does this all amount to? I think it's, uh, we're moving from searching to discovering, right? Google is all about searching. Gold Run Augmented Reality is about discovering. So suddenly, you know, with a smartphone in your pocket, your city becomes a chessboard, and you're the king or the key queen. And um, what that means is that everything has the potential to become a game. Um, so the web gave us multiple identities. I think we're all familiar with that between you know, having to keep up with all of our different identities on Facebook and Twitter and Google+. Plus. Um, and, but the offline world, sort of where the digital and physical meet, is really up for grabs. Um, it's unchartered, unclaimed territory. And so I'm here to basically be a pioneer in that space and to, to break the laws and, and create new ones. Many of the, the laws don't exist yet around virtual space. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's important that we just remember, though, that, that these, I, these ideas don't exist without us. Technology doesn't with it, exist without us. And this, is, this day here is all about sort of where creativity and technology intersect. Um, and so I think it's critical that we understand that it's about still our humanity and it's about our individual and personal ideas. Um, so on that note, I'm going to end uh, by reading a poem I wrote that's on the intersection of technology and creativity. And I, I know a poem is not usually uh, something that's associated with, a, with technology, but that's sort of the reason I, I wrote it. So um, it's called, Do You Really Want to Live Forever? And I'm going to read it, because it was too hard to memorize. <laughs> Microsoft, Google, Apple, and Facebook have created digital doppelgangers of all of us. Unknowingly, we embrace our rapidly advancing future. Do we really want to live forever? Or do our virtual selves happy to replace us? Raised arms, the haptic is transforming. 
once physical, now digital, but movement survives. Movement alone survives. Touch dies. Gesture replaces touch, translating one form into another. Location collapses here, there, and everywhere. Do we reach our biological limits or extend them? We interact with each other in new ways. We stop questioning. Email dies. Digital lies. I still breathe, though, just barely. We witness the evolution unfolding in real time. The World Wide Web will move from online to offline. Augmented reality meets GPS becomes my byline. A seamless extension of a hyper-connected virtual network overlaid on our physical reality will soon go berserk. You can see the future. You can. You just need to look. Innovation accelerates and compounds the lived space of the body and the conceptual space of the mind. An overload of information and just too much to find. Searching in a world of deconstruction, a simultaneous here and nowhere. Will technology be the answer to what is right and fair? Who owns this virtual space we will soon embrace? Virtual goods, gold farms, and what we thought we understood. But no, only slightly these ramifications where digital and physical collide, slide, and reform almost recognizable. And you wonder, was I there? Did I do that? Did I buy that, eat that, fuck that? I can't remember. 24 hours turns to 25, time morphs, or so we think. Digital seduction reigns supreme. Do we really want to live forever? Thank you, Vivian. Thank you.